sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they followed me. The liturgy of the Church of Nigeria, the order of Holy Communion. Bless the Lord who forgive our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Call it for purity altogether. Almighty God. summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Him, Father, Almighty, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and deliver you from all your sin. And strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The collect. And the Bible readings. Let us pray. Um, loving Father. You deliver and save us from you deliver and save us all by the passions and cross of your son Jesus Christ. Grant that by steadfast faith in the merit of his sacrifice we may find help and salvation and may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those that are penetrated. Create and make in us a new and constrained heart, 
that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our righteousness, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Old Testament reading. Hear the word of God as it's written in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning to read from verse 31. Jeremiah 31 from verse 31. Behold, the 
Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we will see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew again to Philip and tell Jesus. And Jesus answered and said, Say, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant shall be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I into the world. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and we glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it say, He turned at it. Others said, An angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, The voice came not but because of me. But for your sake, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto myself. This is the gospel of Christ. <laughs> Bless 
from here. This microphone. Genesis 2, 15 to 25. says marriage is a covenant a sacred bond between a man and a woman instituted by and publicly entered into before God and normally consummated by sexual intercourse. The Bible defines family as the union of one man and one woman in matrimony which may also include biological or adopted children and other persons residing with them. In the book of Genesis, we read that God in the beginning created first a man, Adam, to exercise dominion over his creation, and subsequently a woman, Eve, as the man's sub suitable helper. Genesis 22, 18 and 20. This in turn is in keeping with God's original command to the first human couple to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over all of creation. Genesis 1 28. In this study, therefore, we shall consider the biblical foundation for marriage and Christian family and God's expectation. Praise the Lord. The aim is to remind Christians of the origin and purpose of marriage, the origin and purpose of marriage. Like the introduction says, God expects so many things from us. God expects that from a family there will be multiplication. From the family we'll be able to build characters. From the family we'll be able to build our children to respect God, to honor God, to serve Him, and to worship Him. You can imagine when God created Adam. He created, he said, he created he, male and female. But what was seen physically was one person. But in the spirit, he created two persons. Praise the Lord. And God created all the animals and fired them past Adam. The question that comes to mind is, why didn't God create Eve before creating the animals? But he created the animals and filed them past Adam and was seeing what I think God to my mind expected Adam to pick one of the animals to be his helper. But it was after giving those names Adam did not find anything suitable for him. God now said his work was incomplete. And then he caused Adam to sleep and brought out the woman. 
praise the Lord. I don't know. This is the way I'm looking at it. If Adam had picked maybe a snake and said, this one will stay with me, could it have been possible for a man to be marrying animals? Abby? <laughs> praise the Lord. This is Bible study. So we need to look at these things critically. But today, we are going to look at the questions. The first question said, what in your view are the vital principles of God's plan for marriage? In your own view. I will say my own view. So let us all contribute by saying our views. Genesis 2, 22 to 25. Matthew 19, 6. Ephesians 5, 21 to 30. Please, anyone you see, read. Let's be fast. Time is not in our favor. Is anybody in Genesis 2? Microphone, please. We've read uh, Genesis 2, 22 to 25 before. Okay, so Except just... Except I make contribution. Okay, make contribution from there. When you look at that uh, particular passage, you find out that, in my own view, yes. the real reason for um, the vital principles of God's plan for marriage, number one, is for companionship. Right? If you read there, 22 to 25, he didn't even talk about the procreation, so that one is like secondary. He has already also, nothing takes God unawares. He already knows his plan. It's not as if he even forgot that uh, Adam needs a, com a companion. He knows, but he wanted to finish with these other ones and then before uh, bringing up uh, uh, Eve into the picture. Praise the Lord. So there, the original intention of God was for companionship. Yes, let's read uh, Matthew 19. Is somebody there? Matthew 19. Please, we are dull. Matthew 19.6 Wherefore they are they are no more twin but one flesh what therefore God has joined together let no man put asunder so what is in your view what is the vital principle there in my own view yep. God's original purpose therefore man and woman to be one indivisible body thank you to be one invisible uh, entity there should be unity of purpose, no separation. Hello? Is that the general answer by the house? Or any contrary view? Let's go. Ephesians 5, 21 to 30. Is somebody there? Choir, you push, you'll be helping us now. Ephesians 5, 21 to 30. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, and of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father no, and mother. stop at 30. Okay. So what is, in your view, the vital principle of God's plan for marriage in that area you read? Any other person can help too. Okay, um, I think one of the vital principles of marriage here that wives should be able to submit themselves unto their husband. Like leadership in the house, making sure that the man, like what the scriptures say, that the man is the head of the family. That let there be a submissiveness from the wife to the husband. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the the Lord. Num 
number one thing there is that both of them should submit to each other. That is the first vital principle. Both husband and wife submit yourself to each other. Then he now digress. Wife, submit yourself to your husband. Husband, love your wife. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Marriage is God's intentional purpose to teach us how the church of Christ should flow. If families are living right, it the will be will the same way church will rule. It's a state of love. It's a state of submission. It's a state of care. It's a state of transparency one to another. It's a state of sincerity. It's a state of truth. It's a state of bond. It's a state of fellowship. It's a state of realities. So teaching of the word of God and how life ought to be. So it's a miniature of church. It's a, a reality of church that God just gave to us. So we living in the rules of family shall be dwelling well in the church of Christ. Amen. It is well with the family. The church is uh, well. The community is well. Question two. How did sin affect marriage and the family? And what remedy did God offer? Genesis 4, 19. Genesis, Exodus 20, 14. Then somebody will read 1 Corinthians 5, 8, 7. Let's go. Genesis 4, 19. Is somebody there? I'm told we have seven minutes more. So let's fly. Genesis 4, 19. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada and the name of the other Zillah. So what is, how did sin affect marriage? From that you read, you read. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think from where our mommy read, you can see there that polygamy, you know, and also adultery. Because it's from adultery that you have you will need to have a second wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, so it's, it's already a sin. And it's one wife marriage. is a problem of its own. Then you are bringing another one to join. When you bring another one to join, you are having double barrel anointing for problem. And so sin will come. Unnecessary jealousy. And that is where this one will go and look for one babalawa to do something. Let my husband love me only. I am the number one. And thereby sin will multiply. Praise the Lord. Exodus 20, 14. That one is very clear. Adultery is one of the sins that affects marriage. And what are the remedy? Ex uh, Genesis 1, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Is somebody there? Forge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new law, as ye are unliving. For even Christ, our Passover, is a sacrifice for us. Living a forsaking your old life. You purge yourself. Sin. The remedy for it is you purge yourself. Cleanse your heart. Become a new creature. Confess and forsake those things. You know, like uh, Exodus talks about. Since we know we have a large crowd of witnesses, let us do what? lay aside every sin and weight that easily beset us and let us run with perseverance looking unto Jesus, the author of our faith. So we should confess and forsake them. Question 3 says, what practical ways can we meet God's expectation as a Christian family? 
Genesis, let's read two passages. Genesis 18, 19 and Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9. Can we go? Genesis 18, 19. For I know him that he will command his household after him to do the wish of the Lord, to do justice and judgment that God will bring to pass that which God has promised uh, Abraham. So what do we see there? What do we see there? We are to command and teach our children the way of the Lord, how to serve God. Instill discipline into your children. Let them know that God is supreme. Let them know that it is only God that they will do what? Serve and obey. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy talks about teaching them. When you are going out, teach them. Bind them as a, like now, you see some churches, they will say, Jesus is Lord. Bango. What are you doing? You are preaching. Anybody that wears it, the children wear it, they will see it. Jesus is a Lord. You know? So that is how to write it on the doorpost. There are some families who say, the Lord is my shepherd on their doorpost. Not so. You are teaching anybody coming into that house that the Lord is your shepherd. Children will look at it and say, the Lord is our shepherd. So you teach them. And then, Joshua told the children of Israel, say, choose it this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of the Amorites, the one in Egypt, anyone you want to choose. But as for him and his family, he has made himself known. He has declared that they are going to serve God. So if you declare, even amidst the problem we have in this world today, make it known that you are a child of God. I used to tell people, that is where I envy Muslims. Anywhere they go, the moment it is time for prayer, you don't see a on so why? They don't bend down and begin prayer. But call Christians to come and pray. They will tell you I'm deeper life. I am Anglican. I am redeemed. I will not come to you. Papa say we shouldn't pray with you. So we should be careful. Praise the Lord. The last question has no Bible passage. Say, what are the vices pledging marriages today? What are those vices? Say your own. I will say my own. What are the vices? Yes? From where? Can you give us one? Eh? Secrecy. Nagging. Nagging. Yes? Okay. Nagging. Secrecy. Disobedience. Loss of the world. There are so many of them. Conclusion, marriage is ordained by God and must be between one man, male, and one woman, female. God has blessed humanity with marriage in order to enable human exercise the charge of being fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1.28 Parents, therefore, have the primary responsibility and God-given authority to teach their children. That is where discipleship begins. And in order to do that, parents must model godliness. You cannot be doing something else and you are telling your children to do what? Serve God. Remember, Abraham told lies when Isaac had not been born. The same lie Isaac told. So whatever you do, your children are seeing you. And one of my friends said, Odinobara. It flow from blood. Food for thought. Marriage is the function, origin, origin and source of family discipleship. Is the fountain, rather. Marriage is the fountain, origin and source of family discipleship. Memory verse. Say pray, after sir. me. Memory verse. Malachi 2.15. Pray, sir. Pray. Pray, sir. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name.
this one. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I cannot trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' love. Oh, my God. 
God begin to turn this mighty man and battle. The Lord's son said, let us give him praise and adoration, thanksgiving, the privilege of seeing your sending land of the living. Many plan to see today, they wish they will see today. In their mindset, they plan that today will be part of their agenda. But they were yesterday they were in the mortuary. area. Some end up in coma in the hospital, intensive care. It is a privilege to be here, Lord of the living. Thank this mighty God, praise and worship him. He's a faithful God that is not like unto him. Give him a one word, you can remember to remember him. And in this situation, challenges we find ourselves in a country we call our own. God is still faithful. It's you and I that's not faithful. He's a great God. No wonder David cannot forget this God. David said, lift up my eyes onto the hill. The place of power, the place of strength, the place of uh, authority. David said, um, I was glad when I selected to the house of the Lord. He knew the house of the Lord. When there was challenging, there will be solution. This God is what we need in a time like this. Brethren, the economy cannot solve your problem, but God can do it. Begin to praise his name. Thank him that he have done yesterday. That might not seem that big one. The gift of life, gift of any other team. Many people that plan to see today during couldn't see him. Based on that alone, have, have every reason to say that Father, I, I, I thank you. I praise your name. I appreciate you. No matter what happened in the country, call Nigeria, I'm still alive. I will say, Book of Ecclesiastes, a living dog, not a dead lion. He has to have a hope, he have confidence of tomorrow. Worship this mighty man in battle. He has capacity, have ability, do what he wanted to do. That is not like unto him. No wonder David always has to be in the present to pray this mighty man in battle. Who gave him victory? When he family and friends supported David, David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I run unto him, no more problem. He said, If I want to follow a shadow of them, there is solution. Follow a shadow of them, he will make a way for me. Let me say, the man of shadow of death, this God is still faithful. Begin to worship his name. Bless me. He's a faithful God that is not like unto him. Our prayer is in Jesus' name. But I begin to pray for the church. The church are passing through challenges. The nation are passing, they are passing the church. Many, many believers are giving up their faith. Many things are happening. The economy is something that's, that's what rise from about. Now begin to pray for you. Say, God, help this job. Let the gates of hell not to prevail. The enemy is fighting every day, every point in time, in the midnight. They are not resting to bring the church down. Say, Father, we not end the race halfway. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, in their own, in their own scenario, they didn't support the church. Say, Father, help me in my own season, in my own contemporary situation. Let me not support the church. Pray, begin to pray. Say, God, equip you. God, help me. Help the church. So I can move forward. Let's get to hell without prevail. I know how you are praying. Lord, strengthen us in a time like this. A difficult situation. A difficult time. We don't know what to do. Those in the head are confused. Confusion are everywhere. It's not by my, it's not by, it's, 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 it's not by your strength again. But by the mercy of God. Say, ask God, show the country and the church mercy. We need this mercy in a time like this. Come out of this situation we find ourselves. Things are so bad and ugly. And the church has been affected negatively. So that God can help us. We can solve this problem. God, we pray for the church, oh God. The church never give up this hope on the way. Peter, Andrew, James, and John carry this message on to us. They let us end up our story on the way. Then begin to pray for yourself. We are the family that make up the church. When the family are in problem, the church is also in problem. Say, Father, help me as an individual, as a family, as a mother, as a, as a, as a father, in the family, as the children. People are, what are passing through, it will be so difficult. But God is still faithful. Don't give up your hope in the challenge called Nigeria. Put, ask, pray for your, your health. Something make you come to service this morning. Many people are sleeping in their house. They are playing, they are, they are playing football right now. They are in the presence. Say, God, because I'm in your presence, let me see your miracles today. And I go home being the same. God, we answer our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. My hands are filled, my hands are filled with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. My hands are filled, my hands are filled with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Anyone I know. Anyone I talk 
this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life.
son Jesus Christ to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his own oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did instilled and in his gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming in glory who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given time he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink these all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink, and remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? As our Savior taught us, so we we'll pray. Let's put our hands together unto the Lord. On behalf of the rector, we welcome everyone to the city of God where Jesus is real. We welcome especially those who are watching with us for the first time. Today is your first time. Please, can you signify by raising your hand as we welcome you in our usual way? Thank you. Please stand the band. You are welcome in the day. service on Wednesday. The time is 5.30 p.m. with Holy Communion. Friday Bible study, 5.30 p.m. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and is combined service at 8 a.m. with Holy Communion. There will be a procession in the community, so please let us come prepared. 8 a.m. The choristers, the lay leaders, you are to be on your room. Thank you. St. Peter's School, Jacinth Land Royal Academy has started. The school is located at number 3 LA Amadi Street, former share location, from a precom. Please patronize the school as well as advertise the school. The Association Investment Fund, men 6,000 naira, women 5,000, youth 2,000, children 1,000 naira. Birthday celebrant, all March birthday celebrant, please, at the service closest, wait at the vestry for an information. All April birthday celebrant, please submit your photograph to the curate, soft copy or hard copy. The burial of late Mrs. Love on her car, the mother of Sister Hosanna on her car, a chorister holds on 6th April 224 at Obakre. DNDN Clark's General Meeting Holds at St. Michael Church, L.A. Brown on Friday, 22nd March, time 9 a.m. ACB Retreat Holds at St. Philip's Church, Mbo, Room Alumine on Saturday, 23rd March through Sunday, 24th March, 2024. CMF Provincial Meeting Holds on Saturday, 23rd March.
Watchers meeting host on Thursday, 5.30 p.m. That's for St. Peter's Watchers. Today, by 4 p.m., all the teachers for Lenten preparatory, the Lenten teachers, the meeting host today by 4 p.m. 5 p.m., the inauguration of functional units. Please check the bulletin. Your name is there. We will come here by 5 p.m. today. After the inauguration, there will be emergency council meeting. The barrier of Walnut Uche hosts on Saturday, 23rd March, 9 a.m. Service of Song, Thursday, 21st March, 5 p.m. At Ele Pramo Road, opposite St. Michael's Church. Walmart is the father of one of our cross bearer, Brother Tangod. CMF Corner. CMF, we meet in their groups tomorrow, Monday. The time is 5 30 p.m. Group leaders are to mobilize their members. From the women farm, the egg and chicken are available and affordable. There will be women general council general meeting tomorrow, 5 p.m. Group three host. Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary is now on 8th of April. On 8th of April, there will be women visitation. Okay, they've gone for that one. Women Esco meeting holds on Tuesday, 5 p.m. Youth Corner. Our first general meeting for the year will be held tomorrow, Monday, 18th March, 6 p.m. All youth, please attend. The Association Combined Worship First Council General Meeting we hold as follows. Sunday 24th at Holy Trinity Roma Para, time 10 a.m., dress code black and white. For cheer and canopy, please contact Brogogo Mbaja or the youth president. Secret offering. God bless all that have given in Jesus' name. Amen. In the course of the service, all the notices will come from the rector. Thank you.
want to thank God for his goodness today and this wonderful opportunity to stand before us and to each one of you we are indeed grateful to you for your presence we are here standing to preach because you are there thank you so very much God bless you in this season Lenten season we've been looking at the crucible Crucible is a moment of trial, moment of making that we could become better. And the first one we looked at was image versus character. And we said character supersedes image. Because people can camouflage image and at the expense of character. Later on, regrets will follow. Thereafter, we looked at fear and faith. Fear and faith. Fear paralyzes. Faith energizes. Then we moved on to circumstances versus truth. Look at the circumstance. The circumstance may present itself to be the truth. But if it contradicts the word of God, we must stand by the truth in God's word. And today, we are looking at deception versus integrity. Deception versus integrity. And we've been looking at the life of David. We've seen David and Saul all through. David and Goliath. And today, we are looking at also David and Uriah. Now, it's going to be interactive. If I ask you a question, let us open our heart and respond. Let's look at the crisis as we look at the deception versus integrity. Second Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 5. We are going to point out the crisis from these verses. 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 5. If you are there before me, you can read. In the spring, okay, read if you are there, sir. 2 Samuel 11, 1 to, 1 5. to 5. And it came to pass, after the years, the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, and David sent Joab and his servant with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the even tide that David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. This is the word of God. Wow. Can we see the crisis? Crisis that begun. Time came, you go to war, David was at home. And he decided to go on top of the roof to take the breeze, cold breeze. And in the process, he just looked out and saw a woman betting. Which, uh, maybe modern time, uh, people may be beginning to imagine, how can the woman be betting outside? But I know the older people, most of you betted in the bedroom outside. Is that not? Uh -huh. You can understand very well that it's very, very possible in the picture of what happened here. And David was carried away and invited her and slept with her. Now, 
the crisis began when she now sent words back and said, I am pregnant. Because pregnancy, you cannot hide pregnancy. You can hide the art of the sin, but you can't hide pregnancy. So that was a crisis. Now from there we could see a pattern. In James 1, 14 to 15, let's see the pattern. And this pattern also happened here. All right. If you are in the screen or you have it in your Bible, you can read for us quickly. Okay, so wait, let me read. But each one is tempted when? By his own, okay. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desires are conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. If you look at John chapter 2, where it talks about the curse of the things of this world, and it summarizes it by the lust of the eyes, is that? Can you mention then the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Now, if you go to Genesis chapter 3, you also see the same thing played out in the life of Eve. Eve saw the fruit and it was desirable to behold. Is that not? Aye. And it would give what? Wisdom. She felt, oh, because Satan had deceived her and she saw wisdom in it. And that is the pride of life. And the same pattern there, it was an old, very old pattern. And when Jesus also came into the world, the same temptation came. Satan said, look at the world and his glory. And what should Jesus do? Bow. And I will give it to you freely. So you see this pattern on and on. It starts from the desire. From your desire, you'll be tempted by what you desire. And when you are tempted and you fall, it becomes sin. So temptation is not sin until you have yielded to sin, to the temptation. So you can be tempted. You can be, you know, carried away by what you see, but you must break the chain and say, I will not sin in the midst of this temptation. And of course, sin gives birth to death. So we saw this pattern in um, David. The first thing was what? He behaved. After beholding, desire came. When desire came, invited temptation. And when temptation came, he fell into the temptation. And the thing began. So that is the crisis. And some of us may be going through such crises in our lives. Certain things you didn't bargain for. You see, they just presented themselves. You didn't plan for it, but it just presented themselves. And you see yourself fall victim into it. Mm. All right, let's see what has begun now. Cover up. And this attempt to cover will always be there if you don't follow the word of God. Now, cover up number one. The word David did to cover up. Get Uriah home. Phase one. Second Samuel chapter 11, 6 to 11. If you're there, please help us read quickly. First Samuel 11, 6 to 11. So David sent his word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to David, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace and a, a gift from the king was sent after him. 
But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants and did not go down to his house. When David was told, Uriah did not go home. He asked him, haven't you just come from a distance? Why didn't you go home? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents and my master Joab and my lord lost me and I camped in the open field. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? And lie with my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Cover up. Come back home. Come. And he came. He said, go back to your house. And attempt to cover. But the man looked at himself and said, we are fighting. I can't go home for pleasure now. And he know the attempt to cover. Notice the contrast. David demanded immediate gratification. So what David did was immediate gratification with Uriah's wife. Uriah practiced delayed gratification. He said, I can't go and enjoy now while others are fighting. So we're, we are seeing Uriah becoming more righteous than David. Is that not? <laughs> David abused his authority. David abused his authority. Uriah proved his loyalty. Loyalty to Uriah, loyalty to King himself, because he's a soldier. He can't go back and be enjoying at home while others are at the battle field. When David saw that this one didn't work. You know, he gave him gifts to make him more comfortable. Maybe he would have provided the best vehicle then and said, just relax, let me take you home. Let me give you presidential treat. And the man said, I, I won't be carried away by your presidential treat. And he, he cornered and slept with the servant. Phase 2, verse 12 to 13. Get Uriah drunk. The first one has failed. Then David said to him, 2 Samuel 11, 12 and 13. Then David said to him, stay here one more day and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. At David's invitation, he ate presidential treat, drank with him. That is wonderful. Eating with the president. Okay. And David made him drunk. Deliberately made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his mat among the master servants. He did not go. <laughs> We've seen desire, temptation, sin, death. Sure you know. This pattern is not inevitable. You can break the chain. It can be interrupted by the choices we make in response to God's grace. What attempt do people make today to cover sin? Responses now. We've seen David made how many attempts? Three. What are people doing today to cover sin? Yes? So let's just go straight to the point. Yes, sir. These days, many people use many ways to cover sin. They smile, lies.
people. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. God always provides a way out or escape route. So whenever you are in a fix, always remember, ask God, help me. He will help you. Don't try, don't be covering. How long will you be covering up? Even in some families, some people have covered up something. The day it will explode, <laughs> no one will be able to manage it. Why not you think back and ask God to help you pray and open up and break that chain? Because if you do this one today to cover up, another thing will come up, you do another thing to cover up. So you keep devising many things to cover until there is nothing to cover again. What's the aftermath? Second Samuel eleven twenty six to twenty seven. A. When Uriah's wife, Second Samuel eleven twenty six. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house. And she became, can we read it together? And she became, and bore him. Hey, you know win now. Uriah don't die to cover up. <laughs> All is well that ends well. Uriah dies. Bathsheba mourns. David marries Bathsheba. Bathsheba gives birth. They all live happily ever after. Is that true? <laughs> Second Samuel eleven twenty seven b. Second Samuel eleven twenty seven b. And he says, but the thing David had done displeased. There is a big eye that sees. You know, I've shared a story here of a, 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 a woman that goes to steal people cassava. So she has so many children, and when she is going, she will plant them. Plant them. So that when somebody is coming, they know the, the chant, what they will chant. The second person will continue the chant. The third one will continue until the woman will know that it's a sign that somebody is coming and she will escape. But one day, the last child closest to her say, Mommy, there is a big eye seeing us. And say, Where? He say, Up. <laughs> you cannot hide from that big eye. You can dodge it from any man, but you cannot deceive the big eye. Maybe he did everything to cover up, but he could not cover the eye of the Lord. And it didn't displease the Lord. The choices. Continue on the road that leads to death. Take exit God provides. It's your choice whether to continue or take the exit that God provides and turn around. Even better, stay on the right road all along. Second Samuel 11 1. We have read times the king used to go to war. He sat at home. That was the wrong time. See, if you are the wrong place, at the right time, wrong things must definitely happen. Always pray to always be at the right place at the right time. Most times we've made mistakes in our lives had always been at, at our wrong moment. The, this tra tragic series of events could have been avoided if David had been where he belonged. Any question? Let's take one or two questions. Any question? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my question is uh, very simple. That is, as David is the king of uh, Israel, probably I believe that he, he must have been tired of uh, so 
has led him to fall into a terrible sin. In the next study, we will begin to see the outcome. What we are presenting today is the deception and integrity of Uriah. By next study, we will begin to explore the, the consequences. Yes? Okay. From our studies, we saw that uh, Uriah was loyal to the core. In the same manner, Joab can also be counted as one who was loyal because his principal wrote a letter to him and he executed the instructions therein to the extent that he partook in the uh, strategies that led to the death and clearing of the mess. Yes. It was so in this it. instance, would you count it against Joab that he has also uh, perpetrated evil? being that he was loyal to his principal's instruction. Uh, 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 do we have anybody with military this thing here? So the person can answer. <laughs> military background or police background. Uh, eh? When your God gives you command, go and do this. Uh -huh. Okay, let's tell us. Uh, there is what we call obey the last command. When an officer has given you an instruction, you must obey. You must definitely obey. But in, it is only now when some of the officers have, have decided on their own to know God. There are certain instructions or command that you'll be given and you use your discretion. Either to obey or not to obey. But you must face the consequences okay. of disobedience. It might also cost you your life. Exactly. All right. So, okay, just questions. I don't want us to answer. Uh, let's just leave it so that we'll go. The thing there, you, you are a child of God. You are led by the Spirit of God. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Uh -huh. There is a hand somewhere there. We'll, we'll come back here, then we'll come to Prof in the front. Yes, we'll pick the two persons there. Let's make it quick, quick. Praise the Lord. If we find ourselves in this kind of situation that you will find himself, like he obeyed and the obedient leads to his death, if we find ourselves in this situation, what do we do? Uh, you will do what you will did. <laughs> and ask God to help you. Is that not? Because there is nothing you will do as a child of God is to do what is right. Uh -huh. And then also apply wisdom. Yes. Then we'll come to yeah to mommy here. Sorry, John. Then prof I want to ask. They said um, David was after God's own heart, but he did so many evil. Why did God choose the one that did evil? All right. You know we have read on the route for escape. He said, "He that thinks he's standing should take heed, lest he fall." So anybody can fall. You agree with me? Anybody can fall. So don't see yourself that you can't fall. You know, some people say, I don't go fit fall. <laughs> Be careful. That's where humility comes in. All right. Is that clear? So always remind yourself. In fact, the higher you grow, the more easier it becomes for you to fall. So you need to rely on God the more. Yes, ma'am. My question is simple. How did God allow Jesus died. Why would Rachel Jesus die? Why would Rachel?
righteous Stephen be stoned. You know, it can you can also pay the price for living right so that other generation will live right. If Ruria has messed up here, yeah, we wouldn't have been studying him today. All right, lastly, Prof. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think she has even answered it. Mine is to think aloud. Uh, I was wondering why uh, the last thing we had was what David did displeased God. And uh, like somebody said, I was wondering why God would keep quiet and allow this thing to go through. God would have intervened at a point so that we give glory to him. That this past story was averted at a point because he intervened. Because it's characteristic of God in the Bible. He always allows these things to come to uh, a bad result to get to. And he has the power to have stopped it at a point. And uh, we wonder why. why yeah, because you know, we, we, Prof, we keep wondering. There are certain things I say that we will never know here on earth. When I go to heaven, I will ask God face to face. That God, why did you allow this kind of thing to happen? You know, there are certain things that uh, we might not all be able to answer now. All we are doing now is to make effort through the scripture and revelations we have received now. But there are certain things we might not be able to explain. So from the scriptures, you realize that the righteous will go through hard times. And so when righteous goes through hard times, it's not abnormal. When you are in the office and others are cheating and you refuse to cheat and you are persecuted for that, you are righteous. Stand for it. Be happy. At the end, God will always give you victory. Hallelujah. Let's keep thinking. The essence of this study is to keep your mind agitating. Just keep thinking through it until when we enter the next study. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your, your word. Like Uriah, help us to remain loyal. And like David, help us not to fall into sin. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.
and is still counting. Praise the Lord. Now, we do this because we want others to give their life to Christ and we want the church to grow. 